the great book of magic art, Hindu magic and East Indian occultism, book one, chapter one. The King and the Disciple. A certain king of the capital city of the province of, you know, left blank for uh, privacy reasons, who was, with all, a great philosopher, had previously heard of the writer's ability as an adept, and was greatly interested. Some time after this, a disciple of mine visited the king who asked him about the wonderful occult powers and wonders of his master and teacher. The adept listened to the king's story, and the king asked the adept, my disciple, whether he could himself, in addition to his occult powers, manifest in words like his master, and if so, how it could be attained. The adept who, as stated above, had been a disciple and student of the writers, answered, O king, thou knowest not how thou hast embarrassed me. For when we are young, and finding we have the natural powers for an adept, we go before a master of debt, be taught all the occult and spiritual secrets and powers of the order. And here we take a most binding oath never to reveal by hint or word or mark or written character anything that will reveal any of our signs and occult mysteries, binding ourselves under great and terrible penalties, which I cannot name to thee. Know then, O king, I shall answer all thy questions and am desirous to serve thee, but what shall I do? The king said, I being king, absolve thee from thy oath. The adept said, compared to my power, as a disciple of L. W. De Lawrence, thy power, O King, is but as a chaff for the wind, and my subtle realms are the keys of all dominions. Not only do I and my craft rule over mortals, but over the spirits of the dead. My oath, then, is too great for thee to absolve, for I cannot even absolve it myself. Particularly, well, not just uh, organized, uh, so-called organized religion, too, is, uh, with the various churches and stuff has played this thing. Oh, our priesthood's the real priesthood, and we have the spiritual alliance and power, and you don't. And it's like, w what about how good or true the actual order is? Well, you know, um, not usually the focus, but I have more power than you. And particularly, particularly, I should remember those parts and stuff, but the, the king said, since then thou canst not do all things, and especially absolve an oath. Thou art not sufficient for me to deal with thee. The adept being desirous of pleasing the king, whom had shown him great favor, on certain occasions said, As for that, O king, I tell thee, I cannot reveal all, for the virtue of my occult powers dependeth much on their secrets and mysteries. Nevertheless, as I am very grateful for favors granted me, and the interest thou hast shown in my life work, I might reveal an index to thee, to which, if thou wouldest apply thyself diligently as my chila, disciple, thou mightest attain the remainder, to all of which the king gladly agreed. The king thereupon requested my disciple to perform before him, agreeing to award him well for the instruction imparted, and also for any knowledge gained from the spirits. The adept at once fell to work, performing wonderful feats such as causing the tables and seats and desks to move about and to roll over, and to cause voices to speak in unseen places. He also caused birds to sit on the king's shoulder. The king said unto him, All these things I have witnessed before, but never performed so well as by thou. Show me now, whilst thou remainest here, how thou canst see it of my neighbor's house. The adept said, Yea, O king, but for that feat it is necessary to enter the state of the Holy Ghost, France, and the price is expensive. The king said, I will pay thee, therefore, enter into the state of the trance. The, uh, my disciple, therefore, turned up his eye and gave a shudder. As one dying, and having stretched himself on the floor, had the king questioned him. The king said, 
Here is chop, chop. Mark now on the floor the character which is on the top of my tablet, on the left of the throne. Thereupon my disciple marked correctly. Now again the king cried him as to his power to see without eyes and in far off places. And having proved him in many ways, the king said, Canst thou also show the spirits of the dead? My disciple said, Of a truth I can, O king, but that requires me to enter into the sublime state of creation. Well, if you reduce the activity around the temporal and parietal lobe, uh, you can have these sort of uh, interactive memories, um, like you're seeing the dead sort of thing. Um, and there's a bunch of other states, like they talk about the Holy Ghost state. Um, you know, you know, there's over 50 chemicals that our body uses to produce various dyes. He then went in a dark corner and laid himself down on the floor, and then entered for the state of trance, and was quite motionless and stiff like one that is quite dead. Presently, a light, like a thin smoke, rose from the body, and stood a little aside, and a voice spake out of the light, saying, Who art thou that callest up the spirits of the dead? Beware, he whose body lieth stiff and cold beside me is one of the heirs of the immortal spirits. What would thou, man of earth, now, man of the earth could be uh, like an initiatic degree, right? Like, for example, in the Kabbalah, earth is like that bottom center, you know, like the feet. Um, it's sort of like that secret technique of silence. Or stillness or all that. The spirit then assumed mortal shape and stood before the king, even while my disciple's body lay on the floor in sight also. The spirit said, What question is it troubleth thee, O king? Speak thou, and I will answer thee, for I am all wisdom and truth personified. The king said, Why hast thou not appeared to me before this? Why have I been left in the dark as to thy real existence? Answer thou me this, for... It is the foundation on which I desire to rest many questions. The Spirit said, I have been with thee from thy youth up, watching over thee. Thou shalt become a great king, because thou hast sought out and desireth to know all that thou mightest attain, if thee applied thyself diligently to learn all the secrets of our brotherhood, of the adepts. After my disciple had left, I was requested by the king to appear before him, and when I had come, he said unto me, Some years since I heard of thee, and that thou wert profound. I am delighted thou hast come before me again, that I may question thee. I replied, When thou heardest me before a brother adept, and spirit life spake through me, now I am well learned, and this spirit commandeth me to speak of my own knowledge. I am a man as thou art, yet every man hath a different duty. Thou art king of this province, and I am told, moreover, that thou art good and wise, I trust thou art, otherwise my words will not please thee. As for myself, I was sent into the world to establish anew those that accept wisdom and become learned in those mysteries that are hidden from the common. I gaze upon thee and see thou hast been questioning magicians and those who are not wise, and that thou wast not satisfied. Know then, O king, this is thine error. In not magnifying thy judgment, thou hast worked with like magicians who are under the power of evil spirits of the first resurrection and even spirits below them. Why would first resurrection be more evil? But um, all such spirits work evil on their own individual undertaking as wandering spirits they go about and their teaching is of the same order, merely individual selfish teachings. He whom becometh my chila, disciple, worketh many occult wonders not in a town, but in the affairs of the kings and nations. The king said, Thou art great. L. W. De Lawrence, Or else, thy profound philosophy and the wisdom turneth my brain. So go on and tell me, how shall I know first 
that there are really spirits of the dead. Again, how shall I know the good from the evil spirits? How shall I be able to distinguish betwixt the first and the second resurrections? I said, only by seeing and hearing with the physical eyes and ears, and with the spiritual eyes and ears, can any man or woman attain to know anything either on earth or in spiritual life. When these senses are developed and cleared, then a man knoweth that the spirits of the dead do live and survive their earthly body even beyond death. For I declare, O king, of a truth, that the spirit of my body hath emerged from my body on many occasions, sometimes going subjectively and sometimes objectively. Neither is this a special creation to me only, but it is that which thousands and tens of thousands can attain to by discipline and faith. Touching the first and second resurrections, know thou, O king, spirits that dispose individual things or earthly things, are proposed riches or personal gain, our marriage, descanting to this man or that man as an individual, spirits giving great names, professing to be this or that great person long since dead, all such are deceivers and have not advanced beyond the first resurrection. They deny that I am the great spirit, the all person within their soul. Satanama? Bhagavan? Uh, I, I'm not sure which word they'd be referring to. Is this supposed to be about Hindus? But, um, or that a Hindu might think of. Um, their highest ambition is for graftment on mortals and the revealing in lust and licentiousness. They flatter thee, telling thou work this or that great man in a former reincarnation. They labor thee to make profit of their own magician. They are without truth or virtue, and of little wisdom. The second resurrection cometh not to an individual as an individual. It cometh as an army, but not to an individual, but to a kingdom, a nation, a community. For as such spirits belong to organized communities in spirit life, so doth that organization work with virtuous organizations of mortals. This is true wisdom, O king, to get away from the individual self, to become one with an organization, to work with the great spirit within man. God for the resurrection of man. Okay, so the people that would deserve reincarnation, I guess, because reincarnation is basically like hell. Um, for as thou makest thyself one with many to this end, so laboreth wisdom with thee and them. As thou keepest thyself as an individual self, so do individual spirits come to thee as individuals. Individuals answereth to individuals, the first resurrection to the first, the second to the second. Moreover, the all person is over all, and worketh each in its own order unto a great purpose. Think not, O king, I am making a new doctrine. I am but declaring that which was also proclaimed to the ancient masters. And as many as came forward and had faith were called wisdom's chosen people, because forsooth they chose wisdom and learning of great mysteries, the foolishness and folly. Judge thou then who so denieth the all person, God, within the soul of man is not of our order. Neither hath such a one the light of the great spirit in him. But he who hath attained to understand that all things are but one harmonious whole hath also attained to know what is meant by the terms all person and great spirit. For this within the soul, which is God, is all, and consequently ever present, filling all, extending everywhere. In contradistinction from this, two philosophies have run parallel, which are darkness and evil. One saith the all is not a person, being void, and less than even the parts thereof. The other saith, the only all high is the great angel I worship, who is as a man, and separate from all things, that is, a personal individual God. These comprise the foundation of all the doctrines in the world, are 
that have ever been or ever will be. The latter is idolatry, which is evil. The second, unbelief, which is darkness. And the first, truth, love, wisdom, power, and peace. Under these three heads are all men classified by the great masters of the hidden mysteries. And they may be likened to three men looking across the field. One seeth a light, and knoweth he seeth it. Another hopeth he seeth it, but he only seeth a white flower. But the third seeth nothing at all. As a witness, therefore, the latter is worthless. The second is a circumstantial witness, but the first is a positive, and standeth the highest and firmest of all. He who knoweth that God lieth within his own soul, he also seeth God in the flowers, in the clouds, and in the sunshine, in the fruits and the herbs, and in the beasts of the field, and in every creeping thing, and in the stars and the moon, and earth and sun, and sickness and health, and sorrow and in rejoicing. Verily he findeth God in all things. He knoweth God's eye and ear are forever upon him, and he walketh upright in fear, but in truth and faith and pride and rejoicing. The king asked, Tell me, O L. W. De Lawrence, thy greatest of philosophers, what is the origin and destiny of man? I replied, The ever-present quickeneth him into life in his mother's womb, and he is then and there a new creature, his spirit from the womb, his spirit from the spirit of his creator, and his physical body from the material world, a dual being the great spirit, created him. Man's designation is everlasting resur resurrection, in which matter, man, can have a delightful labor, as he riseth upward forever and ever. The king asked, if the creator is all the time creating, will not the firmament become too full of spirits? I replied, a thousand men read a book, yet that book is no fuller of ideas than at first. The corporeal man is not divisible, and so filleth a place. Thought, which may be likened out of the soul, is the opposite to this. Ten thousand men and women may love thy flower garden, yet thy garden is no fuller because of their love. And the different material circumstances may vary for people with the text. And so may be their psychological circumstances. But they can all actually be on the same good and truth in their own way authentically with the, with some variations according to those things. And people feel like they have to divide into sects, you know. Exalted souls in the higher zones of spirit life are without bulk and substance, and even so are the regions they inhabit as compared to corporeal things. The king said, I would thy were as thou art, for which matter if thou wilt use thy wand and make me even half as wise, I will give away all my kingdom. I replied, Thou canst not bargain for faith or purchase it as a coat or as sandals. And yet, until faith is attained, there is no resurrection. No bird ever flew from its nest. Without first having faith, it could fly. And when thou hast faith, thou wilt cast away thy materialism and choose spiritual powers and treasures instead. Until thou hast attained faith, thou wilt retain thy weakness. This is a judgment unto the rich man in the same way. Riches and a king's kingdom may be likened to balls of gold tied to a, rich, uh, to a man's feet in deep water. He cannot rise until he cutteth himself loose and casteth away that which bindeth him. So also are men bound in spirit. And until they put their own hands to the matter, there is no resurrection for them. The king said, Because thou hast given me this great light, it seemeth to me that I should issue a decree commanding all my people to accept thy doctrines. I replied, O man, how short thy art in thy understanding of wisdom. Violence is its enemy. Such a decree would be no better than a decree establishing a ruler. 
it would thwart itself. Wisdom cometh not with sword and spear like idle gods. It cometh with education, the chief book of which is the example of good works and of peace and of liberty of all. The king said, Thou reasonest well. Hear me then, thou greatest of men. Command me even as if I were thy servant, and I will obey thee. I said, O king, thou tormentest me with my own inability to make thee understand. Thou shalt not make thyself servant to any man, but to wisdom, the great spirit. The king said, Then I will put away my kingdom. I said, Consider first if thou can best serve truth and wisdom in doing this way or that way, and then follow the highest light, and thou shalt not err. The king asked, How sayest thou, Shall I put aside my kingdom and my riches, and do as thou dost? I said, Thou shalt be the thing Be thing, uh, uh, thou shalt be thine own judge. I think this is mistyped here. Um, if I judge for thee, and thou follow my judgment, then am I bound to thee. Suffer me to have my liberty also, because thou shalt be thing, own judge. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. Suffer me to have my liberty also. The king said, If thee would give me thy wisdom, then would I serve thee. How long, sayest thou? A man shall serve thee in order to reach great wisdom. I said, suppose a man has several pieces of glass, some clear, some clouded with smoke and grease. How long, sayest thou, it would require to make them all clear alike? For such is the doubt of self in man. And, of course, the ultimate self, God, right? Um, in parentheses, we'll see Um it cloudeth the soul, and when he hath put doubt of himself away, believing in the universal spirit, God, within him, then is his soul clear, and that is wisdom. For then he beholdeth wisdom, God, through his own soul, yet, and heareth it also. And until he doth this, he believeth not in the existence of wisdom, no matter how much he professeth. The king kept me many days, and questioned me, with great interest and profit. One day he said, Thou art quickly into the other five provinces, and explain to the kings thereof. Therefore I said, O king, I must leave thee, but after a time I will return unto thee, and exhibit to thee the testimony of immortal life and divine wisdom. And after I was gone, the king said, Although I cannot decree De Lawrence's doctrines, I see no reason why I cannot decree thee extinction of certain idol gods, and thereupon he did as he thought best, prohibiting the priest from doing sacrifice to Joss, God, or Hojoss, Lord, or Heten, or Ko, or any supposed other ruler save and accept the great spirit within the soul of man, which is God. Well, again, some of this, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's like Christians trying to make, well, Elohim is uh, is is the, the the father, and Yahweh is the son, and and Adon uh, uh, and uh, Al Shaddai, or uh, uh, you know, what, what, whatever that sort of thing. Different names of God, you can you know act like they're the same thing and not refer to the personifications or divisions in maintaining them. But you know, in course of time, I completed my labor. And by this time, there had been established in different places throughout the world many disciples, either for myself or my followers, and there come unto me this very day from every quarter men and women to learn divine wisdom and truth. And all that were in any way sick or lame or blind or deaf, I administered unto them. Those obsessed with evil spirits, I relieved. You know, obsessive compulsive disorder can be healed through philosophy, right? I said, after I am gone, no man, nor woman, nor child shall say, Behold, the Lawrence was a god, nor shall ye build an image of me, nor a monument after me, nor in any way do more unto me or my memory than to the least of mortals. For I say unto you, I am but a man who hath put away earth possessions, desires, and earthly aspirations. And whatsoever ye see me do or know of my having done, the same is possible unto all men and women, created alive on earth, 
to become a true disciple of divine wisdom, remembering that all things are possible with him who has faith in his own soul. And, you know, faith in yourself, being party to faith in God.